Hello and welcome to Hardcast, where we use our ninja secret agent skills to tear through us some Valiant. I'm Humphrey Erm. And I'm Christian Claus. Well, Chris, so how, what do you think of the first uh, team up of uh, what's called Valiant characters? Um, I liked it. I mean, this this volume was really interesting. Um, it has become more, that, now that I've been reading it more, Eric has become one of my favorite characters characters of the valiant universe i guess um i i guess it was it has been so long since i read the first exo manowar volume that i kind of forgot a lot about him but reading this first uh comic again as soon as i got into um issue five i was like oh yeah 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 this guy is cool this guy is great i, I love the story that he has so then to have him meet this character Ninjax, or Ninjack, I, I'm going to say Ninjax all the time because I even wrote it down in my notes like that <laughs> accidentally. Um, but to, then him to meet Ninjack, who is like really, really cool. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. He's just cool. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah well, right, he, mate. I'm a British ninja, mate. Is he British, though? Oh, maybe that didn't come across there, there really. No, it didn't. I mean, I can't really hear his accent or anything like that. I just, I mean, because you don't see anything of him, so I just assumed that he was an Asian warrior. But yeah, well. All yeah. right. Well, then there again, um, all this <laughs> changed him up a bit there. But no, he is supposed to be like, yeah. I like a combo of James Bond and a ninja. So, so that's that's the whole MI six thing going on. Yeah, well, I mean, MI six could still have any kind of shadowy, you know people that they work with or some of that i don't know um but yeah just looking at this this whole thing you know it is interesting i mean i love the fight scenes that are going on especially between the two of them because they look they look like they're so evenly matched even though they are polar op opposites and i actually mentioned that in my notes as well that i just love how you know eric is this brute force kind of just charge in and see what happens kind of guy and then Jax is, you know, the, uh, you know, stealthy kind of let's hold back and assess the situation before we go in and attack as, you know, little as possible. But then, you know, you strike to kill. And I don't know, I just, I kind of like the dynamic between the two as well, even though it didn't come until like the very end that they actually worked together. So, yeah, but that's what I was going to bring up as well. Um, I mean, both me and Chris have somewhat recently seen Batman v Superman. That is right. So, and this to me, and this to me is kind of, um, well, this is in a sense Valiant's own little, uh, well, I guess for them it would be NV, uh, Ninja V Exo Manowar. Right. B but uh, how do you feel this? Because this is a very typical thing in superhero comics, this whole, hey, let's you and him fight. Right, of course. You know, it's always something uh, Superman, Batman come across each other. Spider-Man comes across uh, Iron Man and some misunderstanding or whatnot, and they have to fight for a bit, and then they're like, no, wait, we just become best friends? Yeah, so how do you yeah. feel well, that I mean, trope came across? Spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> I'm sorry, spoilers. <laughs> so, no, but how um, do you feel that came across yeah. here? Because, you know, because that's one thing I've always found interesting with this rebooted Valiant. You know, well, like, okay, here <laughs> we have these old characters, yeah, and now we, you know, we're rebooting it. Which things are we going to, like, do just like the other uh, companies do? Mm -hmm. And which stuff are we going to actually try to do a better job at or differently? Right. Well, again, I, th I think that this team up works much better than, um, well, then especially, you know, Batman versus Superman, just to take that, that thing. And again, we're going to probably spoil the movie if you haven't seen it yet, or if you don't care, you know, whatever. But um, so just the way that they, in, in Batman versus Superman, how they started, you know, being friends was kind of, uh, yeah, not, it, it didn't feel right, but this one actually did feel right because it was obvious that um, Ninjak was listening to the conversation that um, Eric was having with Alexander. And during the entire time that he was chasing them, um, you had this feeling that he was, you know, he was listening, he was assessing the situation, he was thinking, okay, what is best? And, and his idea that, I mean, to save humanity, you know, he had to make a decision here. Do I do I bring this suit of armor back or do I save humanity? And I think it was a, a nice way. And especially I liked the idea that when Ninjak actually arrived at the house where they were hiding, he didn't attack first. You know, it wasn't 
because I was, I was kind of thinking like, how is that going to work? Is, is Ninjak going to like stealth in or just walk in the door or something like that? And is he going to just like say, okay, I need to, I, I heard what you guys were saying. I need to be a part of this or, or what's going to happen. And this took me completely by surprise how then, you know, the suit recognized him and then shot at him and that they then decided to have a truce in order to, um, to save humanity basically, or to, to go for that common enemy. And I feel that that is much more realistic or believable than what happened between Batman and Superman in the movie. So, oh, definitely true. Of course, it's a different setup in terms of the characters. Yeah, you know, of course. Uh, yeah. With Batman v Superman, you know, it's like several months afterwards, you know, the whole uh, Man of Steel. So they're both kind of been, of course, Ninja, we will have to assume, has also been in this game for a while. You know, he's definitely a professional. Yeah, of course. So, well, but there's, it's much more of a, like, okay, here we have this supposed villain, like from his perspective, you know, Exo Man of War. You know, he crash landed in Rome, he's killed a lot of people, you know, by accident or, you know, on purpose. So, you know, okay, yeah, I gotta take down this alien, you know, even though he's like a human or whatnot. Right, right. So definitely, there it definitely makes sense for the fight to be there because, for all he knows, you know he is, and he's also a mercenary in that sense. So okay, yeah, here, pay, you know, I'll pay you to do this. Right. So it's all it's all set up there, you know, and that's well, you know, it just makes sense. Like you said, it felt like yeah, this this is why they're fighting, and then this is why they're not fighting. Yeah, but I mean, even to get off topic a little bit, I mean, even in Superman versus Batman, there was a reason for them to fight. Batman wanted to fight Superman. He wanted to make him bleed. He wanted to defeat Superman. And in that sense, if if I think if if Batman would have attacked Superman even more, um, at some point Superman would have been like, okay, screw this. I'm going to have to. There's only one way of of defeating of you know stopping you from attacking me and and potentially killing me, and that is to. Uh, you know, puts you out of action first. And then that would have explained the fight. And just like in this comic, um, they could have had that same, um, they could have had that, that's that, that common enemy when, uh, Doomsday came out. You know, when Doomsday was born, mm. um, they would have had that common enemy where they both would have said, okay, look, um, we both don't like each other, but there's something destroying, uh, you know, actually inhabited areas. So maybe we should go uh, deal with that and we can deal with our own shit later, you know? And then, you know, even with the way that the Superman sacrificed himself, that could have been a good point where uh, Batman could have decided, oh, you know what? Maybe this guy isn't such a bad guy. And maybe, you know, he has some good quality traits or whatever and whatever. So technically, Exo Man of War Volume 2 is what Superman versus Batman should have been. So, yeah, no, that's an interesting take. I mean, again, you know, within the DC universe, of course, and applying those things. Right. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's, so, it's more but, yeah. or less the same idea is that you have an, you know, quote unquote alien and a human that is, you know, very skilled. You know, so so I think there are very, there's a lot of parallels here between this story or this telling of the story. I mean, obviously, this the story of Batman versus Superman in like that, that actually mo actual movie has been told a million times before, you know, if you go to the, the roots of the story. So it's not surprising that, that it will pop up every now and again, but I just feel that if we change the characters, you know, change the, um, the, the history or the setting a little bit, uh, you could have a decent Batman versus Superman, uh, story using the exact same plot points that they have in this uh volume yeah definitely so there you go uh guy there you go audience what's called valiant does what dc can't well or warner butters <laughs> i guess or however right right so but i'd like to hear more about what you think of ninjak because i remember you mentioned uh, regarding him in the valiant where he had like a, eh, a bit part i'd say you know he right. was quite featured in issue two yeah, I remember you mentioned yeah. there that you felt he was very generic. He was like, oh, it's the ninja guy. Yeah, well, again, Like there I, wasn't really anything else present. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, I didn't really get to know him that well in that comic. And and to be honest, right now, I can't even remember what he did in that comic. 
because again, it's been over a year that we've uh, read this, or I read this for your article that you're hopefully going to publish sometime soon. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, obviously, yeah, you have the ninja character, and he is the very typical ninja character. You know, he's the the dark, the brooding. I mean, I, I'm just assuming, you know, just from looking at him, um, he's always one step ahead of everyone, and all this kind of stuff. It's it's, it's a very Batman like character. I'm not even sure if. Um, if I remember correctly, wasn't the introduction of Ninjak together with Exo Manowar? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, in in well, the Valiant or here? In, it, no, in the Valiant, in the Valiant. Because I seem to remember a panel where Eric was introduced and he was kind of floating in London next to someone. And I believe that No, someone... Gilad, Gilad. Oh, that was, that was Gilad. Okay, okay. Okay, then I was mistaken. Right, I mean, I remember asking you about, okay, what do you think of Exo Manowar here? And then, of course, right. as you mentioned, well, it's just one panel. Yeah, and it's... No, it's, but he was... Um, I was like, I think I even said that he's Iron Man, basically, isn't he? Hmm, <laughs> which, again, yeah. you weren't wrong in that sense. Well, yeah. No, I mean, you know, power-wise. Yeah. No, but uh, yes, as a what's called reminder of uh, the Valiant there, uh, he was a lot in issue two uh, where he was trying to uh, protect K from uh, the mortal enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that like uh, yeah, that like that hallucination thing that the mortal enemy did, where he dreamt of his like mother with that like long Japanese vampire neck thing. Right, 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 right. And it was also a really awesome thing with the snow. Remember when he like he, when he comes out of the snow with that whole layer on top of him. Yes, yes, I remember that. I was I was really impressed that with that beautiful panel. Yes, yes, I remember. I was I went on and on about that panel, didn't I? Hmm. Yeah. So again, that's um. So yeah, so that's the kind of stuff he was introduced there, and I'd say from you know his introduction, it was all there here as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, he, he, the thing is, he is this this typical awesome character that you know everyone, I guess also loves to hate because you've seen him so often but you can't really you can't really hate him too much because he is just so awesome you know i mean i just just i mean just looking at these panels when i'm going through like when they have these amazing fight scenes um the way he dodges all the blasts and the way he throws his like toxic shurikens and and exploding bullets and all this tech that he has i mean it's it's yeah you're kind of like this guy is is awesome and then and then to add the fact that he's not just a mindless assassin, the idea that he does then uh, recommend the truce between the two so that they could fight the common enemy, it kind of shows like, okay, so he's he's a good guy at heart. You know, he might be brooding. He might be like kind of on the dark side a little bit. He still has a good heart and he, he knows what's right from wrong, you know? Well, he's definitely an anti-hero. I mean, yeah. when you introduce your, you know, new character, having just slaughtered a bunch of people, and then he gets the thing he was, you know, ordered to get, that suitcase, uh, which yeah. I'm not sure if we actually got to see the contents of. No, we didn't. And yes, very totally immorally, you know, you, you know, getting the suitcase was only half the job. <laughs> you know, well, that I mean, kind of thing was, there. It's it definitely the job, showcased. So, I mean, he, has to, he has to finish his job, doesn't he? Yeah, no, of course, but that's what I mean, you know, it's immediately, okay, so this isn't some guy who's, he's not doing that save the cat moment, you know, where it'd be like, dude, go, you know, go change your, dye your hair, you know, Yeah. so change your name and just move, you know, and I'll, I'll just take one of these bodies here and say it was you. Yeah, I guess, you know, I guess not, that nothing is, like that, it's. Yeah, it is one of the, um, that could, that could have been a moment that they could have written like that, they could have, they could have, it would have been so easy to, to have him save the cat in that moment. Um, but I'm actually kind of happy that they didn't, you know. Oh, me too. I mean, it, I think it works very well how it's done. And one thing I'd also like to point out that I rereading it now that I forgot about because I actually got a bit um, uh, pissed off at one point before I continued reading when they first confront each other after um, after Ninjak cuts off a bit of his ear with that the uh, shuriken. Yeah, and then it goes off, and it's so just like quickly over. Yeah, I really like that, because I remember, like, okay, they're talking, that's pretty typical. But then uh, when uh, Exo Manowar, when Eric's suit then was coming on to him again, it was yeah. kind of like, dude, what? No, Ninjak, you know, stop him! You know, I mean, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Eric, but it, like, it's stupid for Ninjak to not do anything. Well, I like, mean... you know, so you've seen that in a lot of movies and stuff, where you wait for them to get all, like, suited up or powered up, and okay, now let's fight. 
Yeah, well, the thing and is... And then that, he falls he, over. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He knows, I think, I think you know, Ninjak in that moment knows that it's a it's a toxic that's, that's going to work on him. Oh, yeah, no, it was well done, but that's what I mean. What do you mean? I mean, I mean, if he knows that, that um, the toxic is going to work, I mean, what I thought was going to happen is that, that exactly, kind of basically exactly what you thought as well. I thought that Ninjak was going to, you know, um, that there was, a, I, I immediately thought there was some sort of poison on there. Um, but I thought that the, the suit would counteract the toxin, mm. you know, meaning, meaning that he would then, you know, he would get the antidote and then they would start fighting. But then to see that the suit didn't work, that was actually kind of interesting to me. I, I thought that was a nice, nice touch actually. Yeah, no, I think I might have... The way that they did that, that part. Well, I think you might have misunderstood me a bit or I might have not been clear. What I meant was that I thought at first that they, I totally forgot about the whole uh, toxic thing that he was going to like be put to sleep. So when when I was rereading oh, it... Oh, okay, you forgot about it. Yeah, okay. and, I didn't, and I was right. kind of like, oh man, I, I forgot it was, you know, I was like, oh man, was this how it happened? And then he fell over, you know, like, right. all right, let's get ready for a proper fight. And then, uh, oh... Because that really works well with yeah. Ninjak there as a ninja, as he kind of pointed out too, you know. Right. Okay. No one knows they've been in a fight with me until it's over. In that sense, I right, mean, that's right. like, yeah, you know, that's why he could confidently expose himself because, well, I won already. I I really like that, right. and then of course, you know, they do get their proper fight later, but even there, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. So, and as you mentioned too, you know, with the good the choreography of the battles. But it's something I've always enjoyed mm -hmm. when you have these kinds of... Uh, obviously, an, as a ninja, he has to be, you know, agile. But I've always enjoyed this whole thing yeah. with... And something I like it when they do with Batman more. Is this sense of, okay, you know, I can't beat this guy, like, through legit means. I mean, throughout all these things here, you know, he easily gets... Uh, Exo Manowar easily gets, you know, his hand around his throat at one point. You know, he blasts at him. Yeah. The, his shurikens just bounce off. But he's, like, always calm and collected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really like when he jumps out of the ship and he has that, like, box with the parachutes on. Yeah. Immediately uses the box as a shield, you know, like, it, it just feels very natural the way they're attacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. feels very like, hmm, okay, let's do this, that, this, that, and ah, yes. Well, again, I just, I so loved, I, I loved the action in this, uh, in this comic. I mean, in the, in this volume as well, especially. Because it was just so energetic, it was so beautiful, it was so, um, it was so well done. Just, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I was, I was actually looking at the panels again and again, like repeatedly, just to kind of take in every moment that I could of it, because it was just so. I don't know. It, was, it just, it just felt so right, and I don't know. I just, I, I, I liked it a lot. The, I, I really do like this comic a lot, and I think I would just continue to. I would continue to read this for for a long time. Well, it's a good thing because this is the only one that has from this, you know, this summer of Valley in 2012 been uh, be, been published every month since then. Oh, that's good. So I think so it's near, a lot I think to it's catch up. Volume, uh, yeah, I think it's nearing up to issue 50 now. I'm not sure if it's next month or the month after. Okay, that's cool. So it's the only one to have reached uh, issue 50, like, by itself, without, like, rebooting it or retooling right, it. Right, right. Nice. So, and it's also, and it's a good thing, considering it's the cornerstone of the Valiant universe, as they've said themselves. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, no, but it's really, I, I wrote a point about this, too, that um, uh, having reread, especially this part, not so much with the first volume when I reread it, but especially this part here, I was very like, yes, I'm, I'm, I remember that why I got so into Valiant when I started reading from the Humble Bumble. Yeah. This this felt nice. This was this felt very, in a sense, very classic superhero like. Yeah. yeah. But with a certain edge, a certain freshness, and also I guess this whole sense of possibilities. Hmm. Like with Ninjak being introduced, we now get uh, again another point of. Um, well, another portion of the Valiant universe, uh, like, introduced. This is the whole, like, okay, it's the crossover time. Right. Even though uh, Ninjak hasn't been introduced before. So, you know, in a sense, it's not a crossover technically, I guess. Yeah. So rather he'd be, like, an Exo Manowar character that's introduced. But, yeah, whatever. But the whole thing is that, um, that I really enjoy is the whole... Um, 
Well, with the volume one, we have it's very Exo Man of War only, and of course, it's his comic. Well, yeah. But a lot of it's on that alien ship. So and the flashbacks, so it feels a lot like a preparation kind of thing. Well, it's setting it up, yeah. But here it really feels like, yeah. But this time it really feels like, even though it's a direct continuation, you know, he's just descended to Earth and stuff, so he's barely had like any time, you know, since the last volume, as before Ninja appear, <laughs> before Ninja appears. Yeah. And then it's just like, yeah, this was an adventure. This was a fun adventure. This was a good episode, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, and um, I was likening it to a bit to how I sometimes feel when I'm reading manga sometimes. Okay. Because I oftentimes like the beginning of a lot of mangas a lot better than what they're like currently when they're being published. Because it's simple at the moment. Yeah, because they have this nice idea. And as much as I like Val... They have this nice idea that they don't then have to, um, you know, convolute with all this extra stuff that, that, you know, their editor wants and to make it more popular, to make it more into this demographic or whatever. The pure idea was good. Exactly. And again, this is the whole issue. I mean, this is the same thing with the MCU now as well. Uh, you know, it's getting the same... Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's it's good. It's still good. I don't want to say that these things are bad in and of themselves. Yeah. But now it's be getting this complexity because, like, I was just thinking about the recent issues I've been reading of Valiant. So, especially with Exo Manowar and stuff. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, man, it's gotten so complicated now. There's, a, like, a lot more characters, not just you know, from other issues, but within the Exo Man of War, like, series. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of little things going on, a lot of changes, and they're good things. They're gr- interesting things happening. But there was something about just Exo teaming up with Ninjak. Well, you're all fighting first, then teaming up. Yeah. It just, I don't know, I liked it. It was a certain freshness to it, and I was really happy to reread it again. Yeah. I do did have one question though. Um, any thoughts on Alexander? Actually, honestly, I I don't really have many. <laughs> um, I don't think I wrote a single note about him. Um, actually, no. Actually, I did. I said it was really nice to see Alexander changing sides. Um, I think I think it kind of shows a little bit about the, you know, for lack of a better word humanity in him that um humanity he's a vine scum exactly um which just kind of shows that i guess it kind of proves this whole like not all vine and um (laughs) hashtag not all vine well it's just it's just kind of like the thing where he 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 does what he believes is right and he doesn't think it's right to kill a lot of people and i mean i love that one line that he had about like um, you know, except for all the the slavery and whatever, uh, you know, we're not that bad. Or yeah, what was it like <laughs> like slavery and and uh, I don't know, I can't remember the line. I can't find it right now either. But it's it's just so interesting. His his view, point of view is that you know everything is fine if you just didn't anger the the um, the, the the main guys, the 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 people in charge. And so he was kind of okay living in the stasis, you know, where everyone just, where we just existed. But now that he, that, that, that Eric basically screwed up by stealing the, the suit, now he's endangered the world and he will do whatever it takes to save his home, so to speak. And I, and I like that. I like that. I mean, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, obviously as someone who has read a couple of comics and kind of knows storytelling a little bit, he could switch back at some point, you know, that this whole thing was just a ruse. I don't know. I don't want you to tell me either. Um, it, it could also be a, a, it could also be a possibility that he's going to change back, but him changing back was also just a ruse. So he actually is a, a traitor, but not really. He could be a triple or a quadruple agent. What are you, know. a triple agent? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a quadruple agent. No, it gets even worse. Um, yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I do like, I do like the characters that have been like these three guys together working together to to take down the the vine or to stop the pre like preemptively stop the invasion, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what what happens next to them. Um, one thing I did notice that well, I did write then up, it will be the invasion. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean they're gonna. I mean it's probably not gonna be like um, volume three, the invasion. 
or well it's volume free planet death well i mean that could mean a lot of things <laughs> actually not really it could, it could only... be any planet yeah it could be it could be like mars could die i don't know um one thing i did notice is that this this um i guess it happened during uh issue seven or six when they were doing a lot of talking um i felt like this comic was very like a tv series uh, especially game of thrones oh, how so well especially game of thrones in the sense of the middle is really boring <laughs> i mean i um I, I mean, I, I noticed this with the last comic that we did, Rush as well, you know, uh, um, Archer and Armstrong that I read. The, the middle bit was kind of, it took a little bit of a, a low, like like issue, because in issue one, you you set up everything, right? So it's, everything's interesting because you're seeing new characters, you're, you're, learn, you're getting to know relationships and stuff like that. And in the second volume, they usually put some, some or the second issue, they put some some action into it, right? And the third issue is basically just talking. You know, sometimes they set up a something at the end, like a like a like a fight to happen in the fourth issue, but the third issue is mostly just talking and just you know, doing whatever. But then the fourth um, issue then starts, you know, getting a little bit more actiony again. And I felt like this was exactly the same thing here in this in this in this five uh, four parts of the issue. There was like, um. You know, just with the Exo Man of War Volume 1, you know, in the first issue, they were explaining a lot of stuff. Second issue, a lot of action. Third issue, a lot of talking. Fourth issue, then a little bit more action again. And it's the same thing here. Issue 5, we had a lot of action. Uh, issue 6, we had a little bit less action, but still, you know, somewhat. Issue 7 was basically just talking. And at the end, Ninjak's, Ninjak comes in and um, and starts attacking a little bit. And then issue, issue 8, we get a a huge fight again. So it feels kind of like, you know, with, with Game of Thrones, where at the beginning, a lot of cool stuff happens. And then the middle couple of episodes get so boring because they're just talking. There's not a lot of stuff. Every now and again, a death will happen, but it's not anything big. And then the last two episodes come where something huge happens. You know, someone important dies. A lot of important people <laughs> die. You know, people get married for some reason or whatever, you know, it's, it's something happens that's big. So I feel like these four issues, they're like four issue blocks where things happen. And I don't know if this goes on for all comics, but um, maybe it's just like an ebb and flow because I don't really follow any comics regularly anymore. I used to read um, Aquaman and uh, the uh, Batman Beyond uh, comics. And I didn't really notice it there, but it's probably because I only read them every month. You know, I read them when they well, came out. Well, it's a different out. feeling then. Uh, right. Um, but I now mean, they reading... are... No, but I mean, they are tend to, they tend to write them for the trade, as it's called. Exactly. So I so, think they, so they yeah. have these like mini arcs, you could say. Like it can still have like a larger arc, but they'll have like, okay, yeah, no, now I have uh, four issues worth here for a volume. I think this right. is a good way to wrap it up while still, you know, cliffhangering for the next volume. Yeah. It actually makes sense. So, but it's, it's tricky. Yeah, the volumes make sense. I mean, I, I like the I like the setup of the volumes. I think if I do get back into if I ever have, you know, um, you know, a little bit more money or something like that, I would definitely um you know, I would definitely start getting the trades for Aquaman and, and then waiting for the trades to come out instead of buying them every month. Well, there's that little. Tr there's a trickiness to that, though, uh, wow. and it's a, and it's a weird balance. Well, it's not, not trickiness from the consumer's point, but the thing is, uh, not all issues, uh, like not all series, get like volumes all the time. It's kind of due to it's based on sales. Oh, really? So if everyone's waiting for the trade and no one's buying the floppies, then they're right. thinking, uh, "Well, no one's. Well, guess no one likes Aquaman. What a shocker!" Yeah. Ah, uh, shut up. Yeah, no, but that you see what I mean. I mean, mm -hmm. they tend to do it for the bigger ones because, again, with those volumes, you can sell them in bookstores. And yeah. thus, you can also kind of reprint them easily. So they do tend to, even for the, like, even for the most C-list, D-list, E-list of characters, mm -hmm. they'll oftentimes have at least, uh, you know, at least one volume's worth because, well, as long as it's out there, someone will buy it. Right, right. So it's simply about the amount and stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So again, I'm not I'm not trying to guilt you now into no, you gotta buy all the floppies, Chris. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. I I need to kind of get into comics a little bit more before I start considering buying any floppies. But I think if I do start, I mean, I don't know how this will change things for the podcast, but you know, I would get really, I'm getting kind of interested in, in following up on what's going on in the uh, Valiant universe. And I, and I kind of feel like I, I'm not allowed to, like, I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, you know, jump ahead and start reading, you know, one of like Gilad's uh, adventures right now, what he's doing right now, because I think it will ruin the surprise. So I'm kind of having to contain myself, but then again, every week I get to read a trade. So, uh, I think I can sustain my, uh, need for more Valiant for a while. Well, eventually you'll, um, what's called, eventually you'll catch up if you, if we really are doing it like once a week. Yeah, of course. So even though we're taking like one series at a time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, considering that what, there'd be like four months for one series to get enough for a volume. And it usually doesn't release the volume like immediately after, usually a couple of months later. Right. So I think we will catch up sooner. Maybe we'll start doing it twice a week. Ha uh, ha no. <laughs> I don't think we'd have to. Uh, I wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, so well, I'm liking you your have a job. release. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, that's a low blow. So yeah. this is the job. I'm podcasting. Sure, sure. Um, Yeah, but again, all, uh, different. Uh, otherwise, you know, this comic really... You know, it was really, really good. I really like it. I mean, I really like the cover as well. Um, yeah, but well, and, you mentioned that be yeah. before too. Yeah, well, it's just it's just a nice thing where you know the cover is, is it looks like the hero could actually be in danger. It looks like Eric could actually be in danger. You know, with the um, the helmet actually you know shattered with the sword. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, these covers are exaggerated, so I didn't think like, oh no, is the suit going to get damaged or something like that. Um, I mean, obviously it's exaggerated to entice like new readers and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it was an interesting cover. It's, it's, it's better than a lot of the other ones that we've seen so far. So, well, that's a thing actually. And this is just overall American comic books in general for me. So I really, um, I wouldn't say I dislike the covers they make, but I just wish they'd make them more based on what's in the comic. Like, it's fine every so often to have kind of these, you know, I wouldn't call them metaphorical covers. I mean, they are there. Right. Yeah. But like you mentioned, the exaggeration there with the, you know, the helmet, because that never happens at all. They fight, you know, and that's what it represents. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he never, you know, whether it's, you know, he never, never like stabs him in the head, or, you know, he doesn't take off the helmet and then breaks it. That never it happens. Never happens at all. I don't think he ever actually makes him bleed with his sword either. He makes him bleed just with the uh, with the shurikens at one time. Yeah, the t- ear tip. Yeah. Oh, oh wait. What? No, I, I'm just thinking that there might be a little. Uh, well, it might uh, not be like a major plot. Well, it wouldn't be a major plot hole anyways. So, but there's just something regarding that ear tip and the Exo Manowar suit that I'm. That was something that they were bringing up in the later issues. That I'm kind of now thinking. If they just forgot about that panel, what that it heals you or what? Yeah, you, you'll you'll see once we get there. Because it just struck me now that like, hey, that was never brought up. Maybe it wasn't. Fig- maybe they didn't didn't figure out that thing before then. Okay. And again, it's not like I'm gonna go like all. Uh, oh my god! Like Valiant doesn't like you know. Well, what does the editor do? I mean, you know, they should have kept track of all this. Right. Okay. You know, it's just a, like a quick little panel, so it's not like a big deal. But it's like. Just a little part of me gets there like, oh, wait a minute. Well, I mean, to your point about the the thing about having covers that actually represent what's inside the uh, story or inside the issue, um, you know, it can be difficult for, especially for, you know, because, cause, I mean, you have to kind of entice people to come in. I mean, no one's going to, you know, watch or buy a, a book that doesn't look interesting. I mean, obviously if you have, you, you can only have so many covers of the two of them fighting. Now you have to of actually course. make some sort of change. You have to make something that, that, that people will go like, Ooh, what happened here? I mean, obviously, yeah, this has never happened. And I think, you know, people are smart enough to understand that covers are, you know, advertising, so to speak for their own uh, book. And, you know, they, 
look at it and go, okay, so I get what's going to happen. You know, they're going to fight. Um, with this, it kind of looks like, well, actually, you know, it looks like Eric is going to die. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it would have been nice. I mean, it would have been nice if that was actually a panel in the cover. Or a panel, the cover was actually a panel in the, in the book. Well, yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't have to be a panel, I think, in that sense. Or, you know, like, or redrawing a panel, but larger and more detailed. But yeah. I just feel, um, I don't know, like like Donald Duck comics here in Europe. I like those because they're usually just like a gag. You know, they'll just be like, oh, that's an amusing thing. You know, it has no reflection of what's inside often. But that's not really why I'm buying it. I'm buying it because I know there'll be a laugh, not because I'm curious what, you know, big crossover event between Mickey and Donald. Right. Which, surprisingly, they have had. Well, of course. So, okay, yeah, you, you've, re you've read those too? When the, like, I, do, I mean, those actual, like, several issue long, like, arcs they've had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I my mom subscribed to the Aquanka. Ah, so there we go, yeah. We would get it every month. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, th that'll be for our next podcast, our Donald Duck podcast. Yeah, we'll make a Donald Duck podcast. <laughs> so, I'll, no, I'll, but, I'll, um, I'll read it in Finnish and you'll read it in Swedish and then we'll compare. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, but I just mean that's the thing there with the covers. Like, I I think it's what I'm tired of is these pin-up covers of just characters standing there or, you know, in cool poses. Like, I just simply like a scene of something. Like, maybe um, for issue three, for example, you know, it would have been nice with a cover of uh, Ninjak holding Alexander hostage. You know, because it happens... Right. And it would make a very striking cover. You're like, oh, 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 what's he doing? You know, maybe if you can get Exo Manowar in there too and looking helpless or something. Like, I'm like, Arr. Right. You know, those kinds of things. It's uh, I, That's what I'd like on my covers. Not just a close-up of uh, some character's face looking angry. Like, he, even if he is angry in the book, it's not. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, how do I know the difference between this cover and the next one? Or, like, yeah, which issue is which? Yeah. Well, I mean, aren't covers usually it's just also... A, it's, a, it's a peeve. Yeah, I know. But I mean, aren't covers also usually done by different artists or like special artists or, you know, I mean, I know that they're usually um, created like extra, you know, they have different shadings, they have like, you know, more work put into them basically. So isn't it basically that you're buying it as an art piece? Instead of, you know, to tell you a part of the story, I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know, I, I feel like like the cover is something more of a, yeah, a piece of art that you buy that represents the story. And it could be metaphorical, it could be literal, it could be um, just the character. I mean, it depends on, of course, who was drawing it, who was making it, who was, who was in the decision process. Because now if I'm going through... Um, the uh, the page we have more or less three or four completely different styles of covers. You know, the first one we have a metaphorical one, which is the um, the sword inside the the helmet. Then we have the um, uh, yeah. Then we have a literal one, which is a fight scene between the two, right? And then we have an artistic one, which is kind mm. of like you know set up. A little bit differently it has different you know it has like it has ninjacks in, in as an action po ninja in an action pose eric in an action pose and then we have this creature in the background you know it's, it's just very artistic it kind of looks like looks like a poster that you could have you know and then the last mm. one, then the last one we have is um is an actual uh part of the comic like it's, it's part of what happens in the story so technically out of four you know there was at least two that speak to what you want, what kind of cover you want. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's not like it's all the time, you know. Like I said, it's, it's a pet peeve, and it doesn't matter in the, that sense. But it's like I mentioned with the first Exo Man of War uh, podcast we did. Yeah. So, I mean, first issue, first issue of the character shows him shows him in the on the cover fighting aliens in space in a suit. Right. He doesn't get to put on the suit in the first issue. Right, right, right. But but they again but, you know but, it's... but they present the suit and they're like oh I don't know what's going to happen with this suit, and then we're all everyone who's read the comic is like we know what happens with the suit we saw it on the cover. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know it's just it's just a little pet peeve of mine. It's not okay, the, yeah. 
you know, I'm not going to like put minus marks or so on it. Yeah, yeah. But I will bring up one thing uh, that I have heard from other podcasts and from uh, like interviews. Uh, it's like you said, first and foremost, it tends to be different artists that do the covers compared to the interiors. And also because they're doing kind of them separately, oftentimes they might be getting um, like outdated info or info that changes while they're making the covers. Right, yeah, that could be. So it could be little editorial mandates and stuff that come in later, and it might be too late to uh, redraw it or change it. Yeah. So let's keep the cover as is. Mm -hmm. And again, it can be from minor things, like maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, maybe like, let's take the whole uh, blade food helmet thing. Maybe that mm -hmm. was how the script said it at first. Right. Well, you know, yeah. like, yo, yeah, then, then, his, then his helmet goes off, and then Ninjak, to show how badass he is, he like cuts through it. Right. And then... But then when, while that artist is drawing that cover, uh, the, what's called the editor and writer are kind of going through and kind of like, you know what, I don't think that actually works. I mean, why would he be able to cut it? You know, we haven't really established that he knows how to cut through it. Right. Ah, yeah, you're right. I guess if he can just cut through with a sword. Again, this is all hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but I again, get, you, I know, you point, might think yeah. the cover was cool. They, yeah, the cover was cool. They can't really redraw anything. So they'll right. keep the cover and just change the interiors. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, I'm glad to see because I think Exo Man of War is um, probably my favorite one as well. Like overall, like I like most of the characters in Valiant. Yeah. But overall, Exo Man of War has been the more consistently good. I think. Okay, that's good to hear. They're, they've had no, but they've had like there's good concepts. I'm curious what you'll think a few volumes forward. Because I think that, to me, is what I'd really like to see in a cinematic universe, so to speak. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, mm -hmm. It won't All be right. until volume four, so it'll be a while. Okay. So, But it's a very interesting character. Uh, I don't want to say like a character piece, but... Uh, well, it's an interesting take for his character. All right. Well, again, I have to say that, you know, so far, Exo Man of War is my favorite book and my so far my favorite character i mean i'm i've just from what i've known i know now already from from gilad is that he probably will become my favorite character but you know since we haven't met him yet in this continuity so to speak um i i will reserve my you know thoughts about him until i meet him because again i've only known i only, all that i know from him is from what i've read in the valiant so maybe he's completely different so so far, I have to say that Exo Man of War is one of my favorite books, um, and definitely my favorite characters are in there. You know, with Ninjak and Eric being in there. All right. Well, with all that said, are you looking forward to the next volume, or 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 the next thing we're going to be reading? Uh, it depends on what it is. Well, what if I say it's something new? Uh something new, something new. What could it be? I don't even know the characters. So I said, it, is it is <laughs> exactly. it exactly? It's uh, is it the Eternal Warrior? No, no, <sighs> you. Uh, this character, from what you've read, I don't think you've come across him at all. Okay. So, who is it? Well, next week we'll be reading Volume 1 of Shadow Man. Okay. That literally says... Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm picturing a ninja. I'm... I, I, picture, I mean, I'm picturing a ninja. It's just... I, oh, so, so, I have, so, I have yeah, li thing... literally no points of like that i i, I have no no anhaltspunkte i'm i'm, I'm my german's leaking <laughs> um yeah i have no point of of reference for this guy so yeah it's like the way you phrased it there though um, with the ninja <laughs> thing cuz it's not but it's <laughs> so for some of the more recent arc there was something kind of so it's uh, i i kind of like that well we'll find out next week won't we yeah, now we'll see. It's it's also a very, uh, what's called, divisive one. A, what's called, the book hasn't been published in a while now. Okay. So been, having been replaced by another one that's been doing better. But uh, it's still part of the universe. And just like with, uh, like in Marvel, with the X-Men not doing very well when they first were introduced, you know, the concepts were still, you know, leaking into all the other uh, issues, all the other series. You know, they right. don't just disappear just because it didn't, like, work. Right, okay, okay. Oh yeah, I think you did mention him to me once. I, I think you did, because this sounds familiar. This whole this compa also this comparison to the X Men, 
I think you did mention this to me once. But yeah. Well, well I mentioned yeah. X-Men for Harbinger about... Uh... Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, thank you for joining me again, Chris. You know, looking forward to next week. Me too. That was the fifth episode of Hardcast, detailing volume two of Exo Man of War. To follow more of me and uh, me and Chris, you can follow us on Twitter at Humphrey underscore Aram and at the underscore Aquarius. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or listen to us directly on robotkeith.com forward slash podcast. Catch us later for our next episode discussing volume one of Shadow Man. <laughs>